Now with our third presenter, Professor Vladimir Fernandez Messiel. Professor Messiel is the head of the McKinsey Center for Economic Freedom and a professor at the graduate program in economics and markets from McKinsey Presbyterian University. Professor Messiel holds a PhD in public administration and government from Foundation de Tullio Vargas. Please join me in welcoming Professor Messiel. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Good afternoon. So our research is about uh, explore the relationship between freedom and prosperity. So uh, it's called who came first, freedom or prosperity and inquire about liberty and welfare. Our team in McKinsey Center for Economic Freedom run this research and next slide please. And our motivation, first of all, uh, is to explore the new index of freedom and prosperity supplied by Atlantic Council and also uh, to explore this opportunity to discuss the cause of prosperity and the role of freedom. So the purpose of our paper is to analyze the relationship between freedom and prosperity inspired by the new institutionalist theory approach. Next slide, please. So our main theoretical reference is new institutionalist theory. So it is a state that it states that institutions that allows freedom, entrepreneurship, uh, returns to labor. So institution that allows freedom and contribute to enhance the prosperity of our nation. Uh, the main authors are Douglas North and particularly in this point of view, Asimo Glue Robson. So by theory, we have a theoretical causal relation from institution that creates freedom and freedom that uh, enhance prosperity. Next slide, please. Uh, we did a literature review about the relation of freedom and prosperity. First of all, freedom index are uh, are measure of institutional quality. So all freedom index as the freedom indexes uh, calculated by Atlantic Council uh, are a kind of measure of institutional quality. Uh, the majority of papers that we, we did the literature review uh, take, takes, uh, take only GDP per capita as the measure of prosperity. So there is uh, only a few papers that works with uh, uh, another variables, but uh, uh, the way that Atlantic Council works, uh, the measure of prosperity, uh, it's a, a new kind of, uh, a, a, a new product, a new, a new, uh, a new index. Uh, uh, we separate the literature review in two parts. We have papers that explore the, the causal, uh, the grandeur causality, the temporal precedence between the variables of freedom and prosperity. And we have another kind of paper that explore the causal effects. So in our paper, particularly in, in this research, we use the two strategies. We, we uh, did causal effect analysis and grandeur causality analysis. Please, next slide. Uh, freedom and prosperity index calculated by Atlantic Council uh, are very correlated. So the, uh, the idea behind our research is to explore uh, and see uh, which are the factors that uh, um, do this very cor the, the strong correlation between freedom and prosperity. Next slide, please. So first we did causal effect analysis. We ran panel models. So the, the best model were fixed effect estimations. So we did three, three estimations, the three models. The first model is the general estimation for the, the, the whole countries of the, the sample, where we run the prosperity index as a dependent variable. Uh, freedom index as independent variable and human capital and technological progress uh, as control variables. Uh, prosperity uh, and freedom are from the index by Atlantic Council. Human capital and technological progress are based on human capital and returns to human capital from Pan World Table. Technological progress are based on uh, total factor productivity 
also by penword table. The second model, uh, we substitute the freedom index by its components. So in, instead of the freedom index, we uh, run a reg regression with economic freedom, political freedom, and also legal freedom and human capital and technological progress uh, as control variables. The third model, we simulate the elasticities uh, by region. So we, we break up our sample by region and we run a natural log of prosperity uh, and the natural log of freedom and natural log of human capital. We did this very simple because when we break up and split the, the sample, we have very few observations. So we had to reduce the number of variables. Human capital in this uh, model, we adopted uh, the IGH, the human development index, the education component as a measure of human capital. Next slide, please. So the first model, the general estimation, uh, we can see that uh, freedom is positively, strongly uh, affects prosperity. So uh, one point more of freedom in the index of freedom increases in point, point, uh, in point 11, and uh, the score of prosperity. Also human capital and total factor productivity affects positively uh, the prosperity index. We have two additional control variables for this specific case a dummy variable for the year of 2011 to 2016. Next slide, please. The model number two, we run the components of freedom. So uh, as you can see, total factor productivity, the technological progress and human capital are also positive as the previous slide. And we have legal freedom, political freedom and economic freedom. All the three uh, measures of freedom are positively associated with prosperity, but only legal freedom has a statistical significantly uh, in 10%. Next slide, please. The model three, we run the regional estimation. So we run the elasticities and this graph summarizes the model. So on the black line, you see the world average. Below the average, we have East Asian and passive. Almost on the average, Europe and Central Asia, and above uh, and below, a little bit slightly below, Sub-Saharan Africa. And above the average, Americas, Middle East and North Africa, and South Asia. As you can see, uh, Americas, Middle East, South Asia, and Sub-Saharan African present. Yeah, positive and statistically significant elasticities. So uh, each 1% of increase in freedom, increase uh, prosperity in Americas, for example, in 0.5, in uh, Middle East and North Africa, 0.36, South Asia, 0.37, and Sub-Saharan Africa 0.174. Next slide, please. The second part of our research is to explore the temporal precedence between the variables. So we had to interpolate the data, yearly data for 2006 to 2021, because we have calculated only observations for 2006, 2011, 2016, in 2021, so we interpolate the years between these periods. Uh, the grandeur, the idea is to explore the grandeur causality for penal data. So we run prosperity is affected by prosperity one leg or two legs before, but also by freedom one or two legs or three legs before. And also we explore if freedom is somehow affected by itself and also by uh, the lagged prosperity. Next slide, please. This first table presents the grandeur causality from prosperity to freedom. 
as uh, each column of this table present uh, the first leg, the second leg, the third, and so on. So as you can see, for the whole regions that we explore, there is a grander causality from prosperity to freedom. So somehow prosperity, the, uh, the lag of prosperity, one lag, two lags, etc., affects freedom. Next slide, please. And also when we explore the temporal causality, the grander causality, the temporal precedence from freedom to prosperity, we found similar results. So uh, the lag of freedom, for, or the, it says uh, freedom in previous years affects prosperity in current year. So in the both situations, uh, we found this B-causal uh, result. Next slide, please. As you can see, greater the freedom, the greater the degree of prosperity of the nations on average. Among the components of the freedom stand out the statistical significance and the magnitude of the estimated coefficient for legal freedom and prosperity. So uh, uh, of the, the three components we have, uh, legal freedom is stronger to affect prosperity. In this sample, by the way, I have to say that in this sample with this data, uh, the magnitudes and statistical significance of the elasticities related to the freedom and prosperity differ between regions. So for example, as we saw before uh, in Americas, we saw a stronger uh, effect of freedom to prosperity, much more than Sub-Saharan Africa and much more than Europe. Europe is an average of the world, but not significant. Uh, and then the results of a grander causality test points in almost all cases to a big causal relationship between freedom and prosperity. It says that both freedom precedes prosperity and prosperity precedes freedom. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to present our research. It's a pleasure to be here.